Yeah, it's just light. Sure. Yeah. See how it goes? Yep. Just tilt it down a bit. Tilt, uh, tilt it uh, towards the counter a bit more. Yep. Just mm -hmm. It's good? Yeah, it's great. <coughs> so, well, do you have a first memory of watching it? Oh, sorry, it's going to be direct to camera. Okay. Uh, a first memory of watching a Canadian film? Or first time you saw a Canadian film? I don't know when I was a little kid that we really made the distinction between watching Canadian movies and watching movies in general. So I'm trying to think of what the first Canadian film that someone would have pointed out to me was Canadian. So no, nothing pops into mind. When you're a kid, they're just sort of all fun stories. <laughs> uh, is there a film that you grew up watching or is it a favorite memory of a Canadian film that like it's funniest or the strangest, like the you know, Porky's or... Or but that, I mean, you know, when you, when, when you get old enough to understand the comedy in Strange Brew, that sort of bridges you from about 10 to 16. It's sort of required watching. It's in that Monty Python Strange Brew portion of a young man's life. So that definitely. Uh, and then, I, then, you know, I started working in the film industry when I was younger, so I became sort of aware of Adam McGoyan, because that was my era. And I was aware of Jésus de Montréal, and uh, started becoming aware of like, wait, they don't just make movies in America. Well, we do this up here too, and we're pretty good at it. So I guess that was the sort of mid-teen portion of my film education. But yeah, Strange Brew, but I don't even know, does Strange Brew belong to Canada anymore? Isn't it, it, doesn't everybody get a piece of that now? Just like I wouldn't say that Fletch is just American, I still laugh at that movie. I'd say Strange Brew is everybody's film. Like Monty Python, I consider that my humor. Might have been a Brit thing in the beginning, but we own that now. I, I'm willing to give the world Strange Brew. <laughs> right. Um, where's your first role in the game? So long as we get residuals. I mean, I guess that's really what it boils down to. <laughs> uh, my first role in a Canadian... The first job I ever had in Canada, in a sort of kind of on the periphery of our business way, was... Uh, uh, doing a, a, I guess you call it a photo shoot for BC Tourism. A friend of my mom's was like a very handsome dude, and they were doing this. I don't even know where this idea came from, but they were doing this photo shoot for BC Tourism, beautiful British Columbia, that was like Jim the Cowboy and Jim the Cowboy's wife, Jim the Cowboy's two kid in a chuck wagon, as though that had anything to do with with <laughs> BC. And I remember being out in Williams Lake and camping for six or seven days and people snapping photos. And I never really understood what that was until several years later I was on a BC ferry. And sure enough, there I was in the deep background on the top of a milk carton lid on the BC ferry. That was my first brush with fame. <laughs> Great. Um, you've been in the States for a while now. You're back, uh, back and forth. Back I mean, I've been you, here for this last year, but yeah, I worked down south a lot. Um, so, what, talk about any differences in cultural differences, industry differences between Canada and the U.S. Well, I, I think that the the film industries of the U.S. and Canada grew up so close to each other that, from a practical level, they're pretty similar. Um, you know, I find there's more difference between sort of how North American films are made and European films are made, or Japanese films, which I've had one experience with. But so I would say that you know, on the floor, Canadian films and American films are very, very similar. The differences really come in the way that we put our movies together, and and you know, we sort of present our film industry or think of our industry as as uh, having a cultural importance beyond just making money, whereas in the States it's really a for-profit business. And both of those have positives and negatives. That's great. Um, <coughs> what's the difference in uh, Canadian versus American craft services? Craft services? Yeah. Uh, well, that really, again, that depends on your budget. Because super low-budget Canadian is the same crap you get on super low-budget American, and I know because I've done them both. <laughs> <laughs> the, if you're in the middle of either country and there's no good food to be had, you're basically living off Dr. Pepper and Red Vines for about 800 miles. <laughs> but at the top end, well, I, I've only heard rumors really at the top end, but I hear they have great stuff. Sushi and lobsters, I hear all kinds of rumors. And uh, how would you describe you, uh, your relationship to Canadian cinema? 
Uh, well, I would describe it as that of both uh, audience member and participant. <clears throat> I mean, I, like I said, when I grew up here, my mom worked in the film industry, and I, I really don't remember ever thinking of film in a, in a nationalistic sort of way. She's Irish, so we never went to see Irish films, and we never went to see Canadian films. We went to see good movies, and occasionally really bad movies. But uh, so I guess my relationship is as you know a proud Canadian who certainly wants to be a part of Canadian film and support Canadian films, but as an audience member, just a, you know somebody who enjoys watching good stories well told. Do you think it's damaging to sometimes as a national, uh, kind of nationalist, well, it's Canadian, it's Canadian. <coughs> Um, I don't think Americans do that as much. Do you think there's a downside to that? In film? Because I would say Americans definitely have a tendency to do that. Well, they are, I think the portrayal is, but like we talked about, this is a well, Canadian it's only a Canadian. Yeah, I, I mean, it's only a downside for Canadians if our nationalism means that we support crap. So long as I'm totally happy to be a proud Canadian when we're still doing something good with that. I mean, I, you certainly don't want to hide behind it should never be an excuse. Well, I know it's not that good, but it's Canadian, so it's okay. It's one of ours. Like, you know, bad things probably shouldn't get remade and remade and remade, or those people shouldn't get opportunity after opportunity. But, but no, I think you know, especially living in the shadow of the cultural giant that is the United States, we do need to be able to to sort of prop up our industry here because I think when I mean, you look at there's an article in the Globe and Mail Sunday. Is talking about the you know the Canadian film industry, the billion dollar a year Canadian film in, or no, yeah, billion dollar a year Canadian film industry, of which something like two percent was uh, box office receipts going to actually Canadian produced films. <coughs> if it weren't for the fact that our government props up our industry, I think it would get entirely swallowed up by by American movies. So yeah, I think there's there's value in nationalism, and I think that you know it has to be appreciated the fact that we're sort of a very very small little minnow in it. <laughs> in a pond with a big, big fish. And uh, is there a Canadian uh, talent you'd love to work with, or that you always want to inspire you, hope to one day work with? Well, I actually picked someone out of my own generation. I really like to work with Sarah Pauly. I'd really like it. either as an actress or a director, frankly. Okay. And, um, is there a? Uh, um, so it okay. happens to me all the time. Right, my lines are coming. Did you ever have a moment on set in, on, on a American production where you felt incredibly Canadian? Uh, yeah, I, there. Well, I mean, there was a. It was probably a bad moment in American production life about ten years ago, where they were sort of sending around these uh, anti-Canada petitions for people to sign on set. And I definitely felt like a stranger in a strange land when I saw my flag with an X through it on a craft service table while I was getting myself a bag of chips. So, yeah, I mean, that's happened. But, again, I think that's people letting their passions get the better of them. And, and like I say, in general, the film life in America is very similar to film life in Canada. <coughs> what was the... Uh you made some films, Ken. So, what was the, what are the some of the biggest challenges you had to overcome making films here? Or were there any? Well, it's, so long as you prepare yourself for the challenges going in, you're all right. I mean, generally, you have to make movies up. But this is that again. That's not really a Canadian filmmaking thing. It's a low budget filmmaking thing. Like we made one week on a true shoestring budget. But I've made an American film on an even smaller shoestring budget. And so, so long as you know that's what it is going in. And you know, prepare yourself for the flea bag motels and the long hours and the Dr. Pepper and Red Vine thing, <laughs> which we covered already. Uh, it's okay. I mean, the, if so long as you're enjoying telling the story enough, that just is. You know, it's, sometimes it's big and luxurious. Sometimes it's teeny tiny podunk, and you're helping to carry the cameras. And that just is what it is. And I don't know that that's really a limitation. I mean, really beautiful, good things come out of that sometimes. So. I wouldn't say it's a limitation, it's just a different. And again, you know, I don't think that's the way a Cronenberg movie would be or an Adam McGoyan movie would be. So maybe that's just a budgetary thing rather than a Canadian versus American thing. Yeah. Probably would be American. Yeah. Um, is there anyone in the industry you work with that turned out to be nothing like you expected? Mm. 
Yeah. Nobody that jumps to mind, actually. Okay, that's right. Can I ask you one quick thing? Sure. Uh, if you're at work, not in school. Um, we're trying to cut together a kind.